message today is called, We Are Overcomers. <laughs> Glory be to God. We read the end of the book and we win. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> oh. On Sunday, Pastor Gary shared Psalm 1611. And it reads, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So God wants to show us the path of life through his word that he's planned for us. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we need to step out in faith one step at a time and trust God on his word. John 1.14 tells us that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Glory to God. We need to let God's word become flesh in and through us. Let us be full of his grace and his truth. Glory be to God. Oh, when, when Pastor Gary was, was speaking, I thought, oh my goodness, that's going to go right along as a great introduction <laughs> to the message that God gave to me. So we are overcomers with the power of God and uh, the word of God working inside of us. Now, I was on a YouTube site um, back a couple of weeks ago and came across this speaker talking about a survey. It was probably American, but it was still relevant to us as Christians. It was a survey of 40,000 people, and the subject was the correlation between Bible reading habits and these people's own personal uh, well-being and their lifestyle concerning how much they read the Bible. So what this survey revealed was that reading the Bible once or twice a week, so probably when the people went to church, <laughs> if they went to church, <laughs> if they read it once or twice a week, then they, the Bible seemed to have a minimum effect on their lives and their lifestyles. You couldn't really see too much difference between the world and between them. And there didn't seem to be all that much of a change in their lives. But people who read the Bible three times a week, they seemed to notice that there was some change in their lifestyle and while being mentally and emotionally, but not a whole lot. There was a little bit more of a change. Among those who read the Bible four times a week or more, then there was a sudden spike <laughs> in certain areas of their lives. <laughs> and uh, it showed that people reading the Bible four or more times per week that they found that the feelings of loneliness decreased by 30 percent. That's almost one third, 30 <laughs> percent. Anger issues decreased by 32 percent. Again, that's almost a third, <laughs> you know. Relationship problems with business partners or children decreased by 40 percent. That's almost half. My gosh. Feelings of spiritual stagnancy and dryness, like just going through the motions, that decreased by 60%. My gosh. The positive outcomes of those reading the Bible four times a week or more was uh, that these people were bolder, sharing their faith and discipling others. They were causing this number to spike and go through the roof in the survey. And as I read, uh, was looking at that and looking at those numbers, I thought, oh, my God, that's 30, 60, and 100-fold. That was revealed through this survey. 
I'm going to read it to you. And we're talking about the word, reading the word and applying it to your life. Let's turn to Mark 4. This, I thought, I've got to look at this. <laughs> yes, Mark 4, verses 14 to 20. I didn't think about it. I went and I grabbed my new Bible. <laughs> so it takes longer to find stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. All right. For, verse 14 of chapter 4 of Mark. The sower sows the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word was sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which were, are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Glory to God. <laughs> So that was one of the the revelations that I got as I was putting this message together and I was going, oh God, you are awesome. <laughs> the, yeah, the truth and power of the Holy Spirit and God's word causes a person to get back on track, rooted and grounded in God's purpose and calling for their life. It'll change the way that you think the way you feel, and the way you live. Paul and I have shared with you a number of times on uh, the way that God had healed our marriage relationship through reading and applying his word to our daily lives. And each one of you, I know, has testimonies of what God did <laughs> as you learned and read the Bible and learned what his word said about you. I have a, a new testimony <laughs> uh, from work uh, from January 20th that I wanted to share that kind of goes right along with this message. Uh, I was sitting in the large living room on a chair. It's near the main entrance of the building. In the staff room, you get the staff that congregate there, and usually there's cussing and swearing, and it's loud. And so I wanted to try and get somewhere by myself. And the big living room, I was kind of hoping I could just disappear on the couch and nobody would pay any attention to me while I read the Bible, because God bless whoever it was, they went and left a Gideon's Bible there that says Holy Bible on the front. So right on the coffee table by the couch. So I thought, I'll just go and get my daily reading done because in the morning I didn't get to finish it. <laughs> the time was getting away. I had to hurry up to work. So anyways, I'm sitting down on the couch and I'm trying to read my uh, daily <laughs> reading. And anyways, doesn't this one guy come up to me? Uh, he's got no legs. Um, they've been amputated, so he's in a wheelchair. So he wheels himself kind of close to me. He says, what you reading? And anyways, I said, I said, a book. <laughs> and anyways, he says, is it a good book? And anyways, I said, it sure is. And I <laughs> held it up so he could read Holy Bible on it. <laughs> and anyways, he comes out and he says, oh, he says, that's so good. And anyways, he came out and he says, I had a friend I really highly respected. He said, I and um, this friend a long time ago, he told me to read the book of John. He said, and I did it. And he says, and I realized as I was reading it, he said, See, things seem to get better. He said, things around me in my life, he said, I can't explain it. He said, he said, but I just noticed that I even started to feel better inside when I was reading it. And anyways, <laughs> I, 
I kind of was amazed. This man, he's lived there probably about 10 to 12 years now, barely never said anything to me unless it was a cuss <laughs> word. <laughs> so, so anyways, basically to get out of his room or whatever. So anyways, I'm looking in his eyes and I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> you're talking to me. You are having a conversation with me. <laughs> I'm thinking, what on earth? Anyways, he uh, ended up uh, telling me, I don't want to miss anything, just a second. Um, he came out and said uh, that uh, he told me that, he, oh, this was when he continued. He says, he says, you know, he says, that Bible doesn't do any good if you don't apply it. And I looked right into his eyes, and I'm thinking, who are you? You're talking to me, <laughs> and you're telling me the Bible doesn't work if you don't <laughs> apply it? I thought, wow, you've got insight. And so anyways, I was just... He was engaging me in the conversation after this because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm not going to get to read my, <laughs> my Bible reading because <laughs> he had no plans on going anywhere. <laughs> and that, so he just kind of planted himself there. <clears throat> and anyways, then he comes out and he says, you know, he says, um, my son-in-law is uh, really sick and... Um, I'm concerned for my daughter because she's got three kids, he said, and I'm just really um, uh, very concerned about her. So anyways, I said, oh, okay then. And anyways, I came out and I asked him, I said, well, since we're on the topic of um, talking about God, I said, did you ever ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? And he said, oh, yeah, I did that a long time ago, he says. <laughs> I said, oh. And I thought, he's never come out to a church service I've had. <laughs> By his lifestyle, I'd have never guessed. <laughs> but anyways, he was just right concerned and talking to me about um, wanting to go see his daughter and that. And... I realized after when I got home, I was thinking about it. I thought, I did not do anything. I went and I sat on the couch. He came over to me. The Holy Spirit drew him over to me because he saw that I was reading the Bible. And it put him in remembrance of the peace of God that he felt reading the Bible and so the Holy Spirit was able to draw him on over to me for conversation. So I thought, you know, don't give up on your prayers. You know, you pray over people. You don't see any changes, any difference. But God's Holy Spirit is working in them. And he's working throughout the earth. You know, so, so that was a pretty cool testimony. And it, and it happens. <laughs> it's never when you're ready for it. <laughs> it always happens when you've, you're you focused on something that you need to do or you want to do, <laughs> you know. So anyways, but God's timing is not our timing. <laughs> yeah, yep, for sure. And in John 16, 33, Jesus said, um, these things have I spoken to you, that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So whatever things are not are uh, taking away your peace in that, God said that he's already overcome it through Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then Revelation 12, 11 states, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And then I was reminded, Joshua 23, verse 10 says, One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fights for you, as he has promised you. So no matter what you're facing, 
God has promised that he's going to fight for us. <laughs> we may be in the battle, but all we have to do is like in Joshua, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, speak the word out of your mouth and watch God turn it around. You know, and then Psalm 103 verse 20 tells us that God's mighty angels hearken. That means to hear, do, and act on to the voice of his word. So we need to be diligent to send the angels out to do things for us, you know. And uh, God gave me revelation too about Joshua 23.10 where it says, One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God, he it is that fights for you as he's promised you. And then also there is in uh, Deuteronomy 32.30, it says, uh, that says, one of you shall chase a thousand, two of you shall chase ten thousand. I was thinking, you can talk to money like that. I can, can chase a thousand dollar debt out of my life in Jesus' name. Paul and I can chase $10,000 worth of debt out of our lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, go God. <laughs> that is so cool. You know, and his word doesn't return void, and he's given us the power to speak his word. And as long as we believe it when we say it, we can have what we desire. So, you know, speak to your debt. <laughs> And know that he's backing his word, you know, and we need to remember to speak the desire and not the problem when we're speaking, you know, uh, in, yeah, in first John four verses seven, eight, and 10, this is in the passion translation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first John four, seven, eight, and 10 says, those who are loved by God, let his love pour from you to one another, because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Glory. And then uh, also in 1 John 4, 15 to 20, I want to give you some scriptures just to, to show you the power of God's love and God's word working in us. Those who give thanks that Jesus is the Son of God live in God, and God lives in them. We have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love he has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. I thought, that's so true. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. God has provided his children with the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 22 uh, to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. Anyone can say, I love God, yet have hatred toward another believer. This makes him a phony, because if you don't love a brother or sister whom you can see, how can you truly love God whom you can't see? For he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also demonstrate love to others. So that means sometimes you got to bite your tongue before you say something you'll regret. <laughs> I remember once a long time ago when, <laughs> when God had been healing our marriage. <laughs> I just thought of this now. So <laughs> I had had a dream through the night and Paul had done something and I woke up and I was furious at him. I was so, t so ticked at him. I think I probably could have strangled him. <laughs> I, I was so mad. I was, oh, the rage I felt. C waking up and I'm in a total rage at him. <laughs> and he had no clue. And, and so he was in his good mood and I was ticked. <laughs> and I had to... I had to, I, I was thinking, I, I wanted to go after him and start telling him off right away. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I realized, wait a minute, I'm in the bed. It was a dream. It was just a dream. <laughs> no. I'm not, I don't think I remember what it was, but I just remember I woke up in a rage at him. So sometimes you've got to bite your tongue <laughs> and think about it and start praying. Pray in the spirit, <laughs> you know, because it could, it could possibly save your marriage or save that relationship. <laughs> My goodness. Yes. <laughs> It's the unknown sin, yes. <laughs> That's it. I choose to forgive you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we put it under the blood. That's it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yes. Yep. In 1 John 5, verses 2 to 5, this is the Passion Translation again. Uh, 1 John 5, verses 2 to 5 says, this is how we can be sure that we love the children of God, by having a passionate love for God and by obedience to his commands or his word. True love for God means obeying his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down as heavy burdens. You see, every child of God overcomes the world, for our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Glory to God. Yes. 1 John 5, verses 13 to 15. This is a regular King James. 1 John 5, 13 to 15 says, I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you will be assured and know without a doubt that you have eternal life. Since we have this confidence, we can also have great boldness before him. For if we present any request agreeable to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we also know that we have obtained the request that we ask of him. Glory to God. So God has given us his word to overcome every obstacle and mountain in our lives. Feed on his word daily to grow strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are the body of Christ in the earth. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 states, Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And God has set some in the church, some apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that, miracles, 
than gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. We need to be about our Father's business, just like Jesus was. We should ask God what we can do for him. We don't get into works, striving to please him or trying to earn our salvation. But we need to be searching our hearts so that we act out of a deep love for him. Just moot with compassion. Start with something that you know that you can do. You can volunteer your time at church for a position in the church. <laughs> I wanted to remind you, nursery and Sunday school workers are needed. You know, if you're sitting in the seat every Sunday in that, you can make time, use of your time while you're here and help out. Find something that you think you can do and just offer it to the Lord as service. You know, if you are computer savvy, <laughs> you know what? The people on sound and the people in uh, editing and that, they need vacations, <laughs> you know, and they need time off. Sometimes some things come up in life and you need to take uh, as time off while the church is going on. You know, it would be good to just serve and help out wherever you can. If you're computer savvy or if, you're, if you know how to do things or if you want to learn how to do something, just ask and uh, I'm sure that they will be willing to give you some jobs that they don't have time, a whole lot of time to invest in that you'd be able to help out with. And so there's, uh, yeah, the sound booth and recording things. And there's also ushers needed. There's also the seniors ministry. <laughs> That's another option if you feel called to outreach programs in the community. And there's also volunteering in various shelters in the community or the food bank programs. Uh, this past, um, I think it was about a week and a half ago, I went and brought some stuff to the homeless shelter. I found out where it was. And anyways, I went to go find it. And it was in an old church that's no longer a church. And so I was trying to find which door to go in because <laughs> it was a big building <laughs> and I could not seem to find which entrance and there was nothing that kind of said come or anything. So I went to a couple of the doors and then there's a woman and another guy standing out on the corner of the sidewalk at the corner of the block and anyways, they're smoking and anyways, they're saying, it's on the side. It's on the side. <laughs> and anyways, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently, I found out afterwards, and she had to basically walk me because there was like three doors on the side. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. So anyway, she came up and she said, uh, we work here, she said, so I can show you where it is. She said, we were just on our break. So I said, oh, okay. But I thought if she hadn't been out there, I probably would have just given up and gone home because I could not figure out how to get into the place. You know, but there are places that need our help. And so just look around you and see what you can do, what you think God is calling you to do, and ask God to lead you, you know. And even if you're an intercessor, Fatine has a 24-hour prayer wall that you can sign up for and join online. It's called the Justice Wall. And it's for praying over abortion and life issues in Canada and in North America. So I'm not suggesting that you get into work, but I'm suggesting, just like the song said, I give my life to you. You know, see what you are supposed to be doing in the body of Christ and take that place. If you're supposed to be the little pinky finger, well, that pinky finger has a purpose. <laughs> So find out what you need to do, even if it's to clean your ear, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. 
So anyways, yes, and if you're feeling left out on the fringe, just like that survey said, um, a number of people felt left out on the fringe, then get yourself busy being about the Father's work, you know, and get into the Word of God and apply it into your life. Start reading the Bible. And there's devotionals online. Pastor Paul shares devotionals that are awesome. <laughs> Every day, yep. <laughs> and so there's those. <laughs> yes, and the confessions, and then there's also the Bible school courses, which were awesome, like that. That just feeds that spiritual hunger that you have, and you learn so much when you take those courses. They are, that is rich food. That is meat of the Word. You know, so uh, look into doing that if you're hungry to get to know. I know for a long time I was really, um, I was not bold about the word at all, and I did not like public speaking, <laughs> and I'd rather hide in a corner. But, you know, as you get to know the word better and you study and those Bible school courses help, you know, and I even stepped out because I didn't like public speaking, I went and volunteered to start preaching <laughs> at Bissett Court where I work and then also at another, uh, another rest home that the seniors group goes to. And, you know, that's helped me a lot. Now I have no problems even singing in public <laughs> because I have, to, I have to lead the music. <laughs> I, and I do it with no accompaniment. <laughs> So that takes great boldness <laughs> to get up in front, and especially when it's around your coworkers. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, oh, glory to God, yes. <laughs> so you know, yes, if you're if you're intimidated by things and that, you know, learn to step out and face that fear and get into something that you might not think you like, like going to seniors' homes and stuff. Stephanie was telling me that she started going and singing over in Halifax at a seniors' home there, you know. Uh, do things, if you're creative, maybe you can do arts and crafts with seniors or go into the schools and work with the children, you know, and teach them about the love of God while you're in there making things with them. There's all kinds of things that God can lead you to do. And so I just wanted to put that out there. You know, remember to praise God and worship him in all you do and laugh. <laughs> when, when problems come your way, you laugh at them. Yes, you know. And um, another, one of the verses, um, another verse I wanted to share with you was 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify, which means make holy, purify, consecrate, separate the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And Romans 8, verse 19, the Passion Translation says, <laughs> this was Pastor Gary again, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. You know, God says that you, each and every one of you, are accepted in the Beloved. Trust God, you have a lot to share from your own testimony, your own testimonies and sharing and studying of God's word. Step out and take your place in the body of Christ and watch your life soar to new heights. Be one of the spikes <laughs> from reading your, your word four times or more a week. <laughs> Glory be to God. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.